My name is Kelsey Morris, and I'm a member of the PBIS Applications Training Team. Today, I'm going to take you through a brief overview of how to use the new Person Management feature to manage your student records. You can see that on my computer, I'm located at the Swiss dashboard. I can get to the Person Management feature one of two ways. In the blue navigation row at the top, I have the icon on the right-hand side for Person Management. I can also get to Person Management by clicking on Tools and then identifying the specific set of persons that I want to work with. In this case, we're going to work with students. Clicking on that student list takes me to my Person Management workspace. Just as with any of the other features in Swiss 5, you're going to notice the use of tabs. I have tabs at the top to tab back and forth between student records, staff records, and non-staff records. For our time together, we're going to talk about student records. Here I have a list of all of the students that are currently active within the Swiss application for my school. I know that I'm only looking at a list of active students because the green triangle before their name tells me that they are active. Secondly, I have only the active filter checked and am displaying only those students who are active. If I were to check the boxes for inactive or archive students, I would see additional students listed in this list who had been marked as inactive or archived. A simple way to think about the difference between these three statuses is to consider that active students are those students who are currently enrolled and active within your building. Inactive students are those students who have been previously enrolled in your building but are now attending school in another school or facility and have the potential to return to your school or facility. Think about a third grader who was in your building but has now moved across town. There's a likelihood that he or she may come back to your building and you'll need to bring them back into your Swiss system. Those students you would mark as inactive. Whereas archived is reserved for those students who have left your building and are not returning. Think about a fifth grader who has graduated from your elementary school and moved on to middle school. You would mark that student's record as archived. The reason we use the filters of inactive and archived is so that way we can hide students from the drop-down list that we use and not accidentally enter referrals for them. Secondly, we do that so we're not deleting any data. If I were to delete a student record as opposed to marking them as inactive or archived, I then delete all of the data ever associated with that student's account. Here in this list of students, I can click on a student's name and on the right hand side have a nice summary snapshot of who that student is. Can identify gender, ethnicity and race, whether or not that student has a 504 or IEP plan, how many referrals they've received in the date of the last referral, as well as if that student is a member of CICO or ISIS. I can also right click on that student's name and then begin to edit or set their status to inactive or archived. I can also edit a student by simply highlighting their name and clicking the edit button. That brings up that student's record and I can then set about changing the information to more appropriately reflect the student. For example, with this student, if he was previously not on an IEP, but now he is, I can change this to yes and then select the disability category that is most applicable. Again, I can either right click on the student's name and edit them or change their status. I can also highlight the student's name and click the edit button and do the same by changing their status, as well as editing their information. Here in this person management workspace, I can also add new students by simply clicking the add button. Here I can begin to enter the student's first name, last name, gender, ID number, 
knowing that anything marked with a red asterisk is a field that must be entered and is required. Once I select that, yes, they do have a five, an IEP plan, I then need to designate which specific disability category is most applicable. I can also here in the person management workspace with students begin to merge duplicate records. For example, I have Alan Hawkins and Alan Levine. There's been a name change in the family and Alan Levine is now Alan Hawkins. So what I need to do is merge the records for Alan Levine with the records for Alan Hawkins. I merge records as opposed to deleting records so that way all of my data is intact and not lost or inaccurately displayed. I know that I want to keep the record for Alan Hawkins. I can, can verify that information by clicking on the student's name and reviewing the summary snapshot. Once I've identified the student that I wish to retain, I then click the Merge button. This brings up the Merge Student Workspace. It's identified for me the student I wish to retain, and on the right-hand portion, it's asking me to select the student record that I want to merge and delete. I'm going to merge the record of Alan Levine with the record of Alan Hawkins. When I make that merge, essentially I'm making a copy and placing the new copy in the Alan Hawkins file. Once I've made that copy and merged, I can then delete the extra copy. If for some reason I've made a mistake and have the names backwards, I can click switch and flip the names as needed. In our case, we are going to retain Alan Hawkins and merge the record of Alan Levine. Once I've verified this information as being accurate, I click Merge and am prompted to confirm my selection. Again, with the Person Management feature in Swiss 5, I can add, edit, merge, set status, and do all of those things with my student records. That's been a brief overview of how to manage and work with student records in the person management feature.